Well, good morning and welcome to Family Time Devotion. Today is June the 24th, Wednesday the 24th. So this month is almost over, but we are glad that you are here with us this morning. Just as a reminder, this is our second week of kind of a change in the schedule. So we are just doing Mondays and Wednesdays at 9 o'clock, so no longer we're going to have it a Friday. So if you show up watching on Friday... We'll put, a, we'll put a, a picture of Mickey no, no. <laughs> on Friday morning for you, but we're so glad that you are here. Um, we're going to kind of finish the conversation that we started on Monday um, out of Proverbs chapter 13. Um, so um, let's, let's pray. Uh, I want to jump into one verse, and then we'll kind of go from there. So join us if you would. Lord, we, we come before you this morning, and Lord, we just thank you for who you are, and what you have done for us. And Lord, as we look into, Lord, as we look into this book, Lord, I pray that not only would we begin to gain wisdom and knowledge and instruction and see everything that um, that is there for us, but Lord, I pray that we would draw closer to you, because that is the ultimate goal of of this book, is, is to get more and more of you. So this morning, Lord, as we talk about a few verses here, Lord, I just ask that um, you, would, you would be with us, Lord, that you would uh, show us exactly what you want us to see. Lord, for those that are watching, uh, maybe live, maybe later, but Lord, I, I just pray that you would use them, uh, help them to search your word and get into your word as well. So Lord, we thank you for this time that we could spend a few minutes of getting into your word together as a family. Lord, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's jump in. Uh, Proverbs chapter 13 is where we're actually starting, and we're going to start with verse 13. So on Monday, we talked about several verses, uh, 3, 4, um, 7, and 11, I believe, if I got that correct. And now we're going to kind of start, and I just want to really mention this one because it's kind of the the, the gist of, of Proverbs again. So Proverbs 13, 13 says, and I'm reading out of the ESV, it says, Whoever despises the word brings destruction on himself, but he who reveres the commandment will be rewarded. And I think, is that not the whole definition of, of the book of Proverbs? Right. And, and, and again, it's, it's Solomon saying to his son, get this instruction, get all of this that, that I'm laying out to you, because depending upon, and we, we've heard it in other verses, depending upon the path that you take will, will be either reward and blessings right. or will be death and destruction. And so Solomon, again, is telling us, don't despise these instructions. And again, we can, they only had a portion of the word, Versus what we have now. We have so much more. So um, I, I start today off by simply saying, get into God's Word. Read God's Word. Make it a daily part of your life. Um, find out what God is, is wanting to, to tell you, and then do it. And He promises here you'll be rewarded by doing that. Your yeah. life will be rewarded. And, you know, what does that mean? Does it mean that you're going to? necessarily get a financial reward, but it could be peace, it could be uh, patience, it could be a lot of things that we receive in life that only comes from God Mm -hmm. by being what he tells us to do. Well, on Monday, we, verse 7 and verse 11, we're talking about kind of wealth Mm -hmm. and how uh, a person kind of goes uh, about it. And gaining, and one of the one of the the ends of verse eleven says, "But whoever, whoever gathers little by little will increase." And so I think that can kind of take us into verse twenty a little bit today. So I'll let you you kind of go from there. Okay. So verse twenty of Proverbs thirteen says, uh, "Boy, actually, I've got to pull it back up, Jason. Oh, you want to read? Can you read? I'll it? read. I'll read it. Yeah. Yes. Verse twenty. Whoever walks with the wise." becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Okay, so this is really kind of one of our foundational verses for our student ministry, that he who walks with the wise becomes wise, uh, but a, a companion of fools suffers harm. Uh, it is so important that we have healthy friendships mm-hmm. and hang around wise people. 
because wise people make wise choices. Um, I have this book here uh, that is a student ministry book, but it really has some interesting uh, s- studies that they've done. A Gallup poll was done in the 1960s, so 50 plus years ago, over 50 years ago. Uh, it said, asking about the three top influences in teenagers' lives. So in 1960, what would you guess would be a top influence in a teenager's life? I know you wasn't born in 1960s. Not, not yet. But um, I would say a teacher. A teacher was actually number two. Okay. Um, I'm going to say parents. Parents was number one. Okay. Um, I'm going to say friends. Well, spiritual leaders was number huh? three. Okay. So that was your order. Parents, teachers, spiritual leaders. Okay. All right. So now just fast forward to the early 2000s, 40 years, and how has that changed? Well, according to the surveys taken, the top influence in teenagers' lives now are friends, media, mm-hmm. which includes social media, music, movies, television, and parents were third. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and what year was that again? This was early 2000s. Okay. Now, if we fast forward to today, it, I don't know if parents make the top three. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure if, if they would or not, but that, that tells us the importance of having healthy friendships without those. Because, let's be honest, if you've had teenagers, um, I'm just speaking from experience. Matter of fact, I've got three teenagers at home and one in, in his 20s now. Uh, I walk, walk this road some, but what happens is as teenagers kind of desire their independence, which is, which is a good thing, you know, we, we shouldn't want to stay, you know, when we're 21 or, or 18 or whatever, we shouldn't be like we were when we were five, as far as yeah. depending on our parents, we, we grow independent, but what happens as we become more independent, we start viewing the things that our parents say a little differently. They're not as wise, they don't seem to be anyway, when we're going through our independent stage as they once were. Now, it's interesting, as we get older, we realize, oh, wait a minute, they were pretty wise. Just how smart they were, but, absolutely. you know, as we search in our teenage years for more independence, we start questioning things our parents say. And sadly enough, our friends, their voice... And many times, even what we see in social media and through media becomes a more important influence in our lives than our parents do. Mm. Uh, And so it's really important that our students have healthy friends. And and not just for our students, but even as adults, it's important that we hang out with wise people. Well, that's what I was going to say. You're talking about students, but how, how, how does that relate to Adults as well, right? I mean, it, it's it's so it's so obvious that the people that we are around influence influence us right. for the good or for the bad. Um, when when you know, I, I've heard story after story of someone becoming saved, and automatically they lose friends. Yeah, and and honestly, that's a good thing. In those situations, because those those old friendships now could they have influenced for the good? I think they can in some of those situations. But the more we're around those those people that we shouldn't be, it, it's going to influence us right. for the, for the bad. Absolutely, and, and I think though one of the reasons when I talk about teenagers, first of all, I work with teenagers, but I think for teenagers, friendship is so important because. You know, the study's been done that, you know, the frontal lobe of a male human brain is not fully developed until the mid-20s. So there's a long period where that frontal lobe, which actually is the part of our brain that tells us that is a dangerous idea, that is something I should not do, that part of our brain is not fully developed until the mid-20s. That is why when you get some boys together, late teenagers, even early 20s, they can do some of the stupidest stuff when they're together. They never do it by themselves. But when they get together with a bunch of guys. It always seems like a good idea. Oh, it, it does. And, and Solomon's saying, walk with the wise. 
Because if you walk with the wise, you're not getting yourself in trouble. But a companion, it, it's interesting, it doesn't say a fool suffers harm, but it says a companion of a fool suffers harm. If you hang out with foolish people, the Bible says, you're going to get burned. Hmm. They sometimes, and I've heard this so many times, of somebody that's riding with somebody that's been drinking. Hmm. And a person that's driving doesn't get hurt. They have a wreck. It's the person riding with them. It's the companion with them. That ends up, yeah. And Psalm is saying, please understand, if you hang with foolish people, uh, you're going to get hurt. You're yeah. going to get harmed. One of the things that I love, going off of your, your list of, of people, and I'm going to put a shameless plug for our life groups, mm -hmm. because I, I, I have seen it, and it's happening in our own household. And, and I'll say this, you know, kids... I, I hope my daughter can come to me and talk about anything, right? Um, whether good or bad, okay? But sometimes it, it's hard to do that and to have another adult in your kids' lives that can steer them in, right. in a good direction. Right. And, and Karen and I have experienced that through our life group, that we've got other ladies that are coming alongside to, to help. To invest. Um, to invest, to say, hey, if you ever need us, you let us know. And, and I hope that that's what those small groups can become. And that, that's hard to do it in a big setting. Mm -hmm. um, it is. But in those smaller groups, it allows us, because we're more like family, right. that you can break some of those walls. So instead of going to someone her own age and saying, hey, well, what do you think about this? She's going to an adult to say, hey, can you help me here? Yeah, and you know, it's, I was thinking about this, it's really, raising uh, teenagers today is such a challenge because with social media and with uh, our phones and stuff, you know, in many ways their phone can replace their parents. Hmm. They've got questions about anything in life, they don't have to ask their parents, they ask Google. Google. Uh, and that even includes some real important issues. They seek out the advice from the world rather than parents. And uh, so, you know, that unfortunately that's just reality. But so it makes parenting a big challenge today, Absolutely. a huge challenge. But having godly friends, I, there, there's no replacement there for a teenager. And, and it's important also for adults, but so much for our young people as they're growing. Absolutely. Well, let's, let's move on okay. just for time to a verse that I understand <laughs> so very well. If, if I have a theme verse for my life, this is probably my theme verse. And I don't know about you, but... So you're going to say you were very loved. Is that what you're going to say? I was absolutely loved as a child. Okay. Let's, right. let's put it that way. Proverbs chapter 13, verses 24. And you're going to laugh when I read it, but you'll understand. Whoever spares the rod... Hates his son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. <laughs> I was a loved child. What about David? David was not a loved child. <laughs> I mean, in, in this verse, David was not a loved child. Now, I'm, I'm joking that um, we, we were talking a little bit before uh, we actually came on. Um, David was kind of the perfect child. I was kind of opposite David. Um, so needless to say, the, the, if, you're, if you're doing a scale, a balance of how many times David was really truly disciplined and I was, there's no contest how much heavier mine what, was. What 50 -50? There was no way it was 50-50. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even sure it was 99 and 1, you know. Um, but we look at this verse, whoever spares the rod hates his son. But he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. I, I've told Jenna when, when, when I'm correcting her or I'm doing something that, that she's done wrong, I, I tell her, I make sure, and this is what my mom and dad did to me. Um, and I, w I was one of those, hey, you're going to get a spanking. Bring it on. Come on. Bring it on. But what my parents did is after they spanked me, and they, they did, and I'm so glad they did. Let me make sure that they put it in there. Because it trained me. It, it taught me right from wrong. Right. 
But what they did is once, once they spanked me, they then went to Scripture and said, listen, we're not just doing this to be doing this. We're doing this right here because we love you. Yeah. And, I, and I tried to make sure that anytime I discipline Jenna, I'm like, listen, this is why I'm doing it. Because I love you. Um, Pastor Tom has said over and over, he's used the example of Cameron running out in the street. Right. And he'll correct her and he'll pull her back and she'll go back out there. And eventually he's getting to a point where he's saying, don't you dare go back out there. And it's not a because we want to hinder you. It's because we love you. Right. Well, and let me just kind of say this and we'll kind of wrap it up because we could talk about this yeah. for a long time. But, you know, I think sometimes because of... We may not discipline because we want to have grace and compassion on our kids. Um, but often that is a big mistake just because the harm, potentially the harm that they're going to get from not learning the consequences <clears throat> of their sin. Uh, the Bible says you hate your child. That's how mm. great Solomon writes it, that you really hate your child when you don't discipline them. I mean, that's strong language. Yeah. And so it's very important that as parents, we've been given the role to teach our kids right from wrong. And when we don't do that, uh, they grow up to be adults, and we see that in our culture today, that have no, no judgment between right and wrong. They just do whatever they want. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't help them at all. And, and m make sure, please don't understand, please understand what we're not saying here. We're not just saying go out and whip your child. Right. Okay? We're, we're not, I don't advocate that at all. What this verse is saying, I think. Your dad, have, ad, your dad did advocate that, though, didn't he? Um, <laughs> no, he, I'm just he did it with the point I'm about to make. I'm, gonna make, I'm here for you, Dad. I'm, I'm saving. But no, I, I, and this is what, uh, the point that I want to make sure people understand. It's not, I can't believe my child did that, so they just go out and beat their child. Right, right. It has to be done out of love. Yeah. And if it's not done out of love, if that correction is not out of that love, then it is completely wrong. And, and it will end, end up being rebellion. That's yes. what will happen. So, so I want to make sure somebody's understanding what we're talking about here. And I, th I think they do, but again, it, it's, it's because of the love that we have for that child. And we're, 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 it's almost we're Solomon and they're the, the prince. And we're saying, listen to me. Listen to me. And it's a way, because I love you so much, I'm going to discipline you to make sure that you do understand the consequences. So as our teenagers would say today, you're definitely, towards your dad, you're not throwing shade on him, uh, but you're actually respecting him. Absolutely. And, and I'm glad he did. Because it taught me right from wrong. It taught me what I should do and what I shouldn't do. So... Again, it's because of the love that they had for me. And again, did they have the love for me? <laughs> you know, on that. So uh, I think we'll, we'll close it. You have anything else on no, that? That's it. Okay. So um, just a couple of, uh, one more reminder for you today before we close. Um, we've got one more Sunday in the month of June. So if you haven't registered yet, you can actually go to milestraightbc.org. And right there on the home page is a link for you to go to our registration page. And you can sign up for either the 9 o'clock service or the 1030 service. Um, and so one more Sunday in the month of June, and it's, it's done. We're almost halfway through the year. So we are so grateful to you for watching today. Um, next week, we'll be back. And in the uh, book, uh, excuse me, the chapter... 14, 14 of right. Proverbs. Right. So join us next Monday morning at 9 a.m. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you later.